Welcome back everybody to Military Surplus Brothers. Today we have a Martian for you. And not really in the ET extraterrestrial kind of way. This is actually a Martian 32 caliber pistol from Spain. However, what's interesting is that's the commercial name for this pistol. Um, some of you probably already recognize this if you're into military surplus guns, but this is actually a Spanish ruby copy. Uh, the French, as you may be aware, in World War I, needed every pistol they could possibly get, some of which you've seen in our channel before. We have the, uh, you know, the 8mm Lebel revolver, the 1892, which is fantastic, by the way. But they couldn't make enough of those, and so what they did is they just looked all around Europe, especially for people who were at least allies or were not affiliated, which at this time Spain was, and they said, make us anything you possibly can. And so what they did is they found a firm in Spain, in the Ibar region, I think uh, Gabrilando Uresti is the name of the uh, firm, and they contracted with them to make these little pistols. Now, you come in here, um, a lot of this is going to look really familiar, and a lot of you are going to say, well, that's not a ruby, that's a, that's a, uh, a, a Browning um, hammerless uh, pistol. And you would say, yeah, it looks a lot like a 1903, it looks a lot of, like his um, other designs of that ilk. Um, and a lot of the design features are very similar. It does have a rotating barrel. It is in 32 auto, which is a very common caliber for the time. And it does have a safety, of course. So a lot of this is very reminiscent of Browning. One of the actually wonderful things about the Ruby was that, unlike many revolvers of the time, the Ruby could carry conceivably 9 plus 1 rounds of 32 auto, which was pretty similar in power to most revolver rounds of the time, and in rapid succession. The ruby was also quite accurate. This was much preferable, obviously, to most revolvers at the time, as long as you didn't get your friend's magazine. Very quickly, let me show you what we mean by rotating barrel. We don't mean a Stoger, we don't mean any of the other countless, well, not countless, but um, few and far between uh, pistols where you have a rotating barrel to lock up. What actually the rotating barrel is for is for disassembly. So when you rotate this barrel, it disengages the locking lugs, you can pull the gun out, rotate it back this way, and the barrel comes out of the gun. That's the whole barrel. Now, the rest of the disassembly process is very simple. You just disengage this safety here, and the whole gun should come apart if we have the magazine out, which we do now, and the whole front portion of the gun comes off and falls apart, and you have your four main components. Slide, recoil spring, barrel, and frame. All right, cameraman Bob, let's get some of that sweet, sweet mechanical function action. Insert magazine in the rear, pull the slide back, let it go. This is a straight blowback pistol. It's a striker, no hammer, so very simple. And thankfully, because this was used in World War I, not a lot of places to get gunk and grime in. And reasonably accurate. So, as the French contracted with the Spanish to use this particular pistol, again, the, the Martian in this case has been rebadged, but the Ruby, in reality, uh, they found out that not only could Gabrilando Uresti not actually make enough of these, uh, but they couldn't make them to the quality that they required in the French military. Um, Gabrilando Uresti actually ended up having to um, contract with several other Ibar region manufacturers. They built a whole bunch of these pistols to what was essentially spec, what was essentially the requirements of the French military, but they found that everybody made it ever so slightly differently. So while the guns all functioned and, and worked the same way, you didn't have to be trained on a different uh, manufacturer's pistol in any different way that you would be trained on any other one, they found that there were minor differences. Probably the most notable difference of those is the magazines. Now, uh, we are thankful um, that we have a matching magazine and pistol. You'll notice um, our maker's mark is right down here. I want to show you that, so come in and uh, zoom right there. We also have the same maker's mark on our magazine. You'll notice they're both an MB with a, uh, a circle. Now, I think the one on the magazine is upside down there, but you get the point. Um, I'm not 100% certain exactly who manufactured this pistol, but they do match. Um, there's a very long list uh, of which I will try to um, link you to in the description below, um, but I was never able to exactly figure out who this was. Um, let me go do a little bit more shooting and we'll get you a little bit more history. All right, so we do have a nine round single stack magazine. Again, thankfully this one matches. 
if you found that your magazine did not match, say you got your friend's magazine mixed up with yours, your gun was likely to not work. It may fit and it may lock up. In fact, it would be very unlikely for them not to lock up because it is a, uh, a bottom locking magazine. Um, but you may find that you have feed issues. Um, ironically enough, even though we have a correct magazine to a correct gun, we also have feeding problems in this gun occasionally. But it's old. So, hey, it happens. All right. Let me uh, put my nine rounds in here, see what we can do as far as accuracy. Now, funnily enough, this doesn't really have a slide drop, um, but what it does have is a manual safety. So you'll notice on this pistol here that we have F for fire um, and S for safe. Ironically, the idea of this was that when you have the slide closed, which we will do here, and I'll keep my hand out of the way of the muzzle, it will load, okay? When you have fire covered, you cannot see F there, you can't fire. When you have S showing, it is on safe. When you cover safe and you can see F, now it is in firing mode. So let us see if we can uh, shoot a few plates here um, and see kind of what our general functionality and accuracy is here. All right, here we go. Oh, missed that middle plate, it's a little too small. There we go. Try that middle one one more time. Oh, missed it. Do I have one more round? Did he fire nine or eight? Do you feel lucky, punk? Apparently the big plate feels lucky. That's one problem with this gun, is that it does have no manual hold open. Uh, the magazine does not hold the slide open on empty. Very much like the 1903, this copied that too, so there is no hold open. All right, if you guys like this kind of thing, hit that like and subscribe button uh, down there over the comments. Um, we're going to bring you more military surplus handguns, rifles, and possibly shotguns, if we can find one for under $1,000. Um, this has been the 32 Auto Spanish Ruby for the French military in World War I. Vive la France!